Hello, guys, and welcome to Truth and Transparency. Um, today's live episode will begin with last night's trailer drop. Um, it's about nine and a half minutes. Uh, I will play it through, and then from there we will kick off the live. Again, I want to remind everybody that if you are in live chat, please be kind to one another. Um, consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, or disliking it based on your um, approval or disapproval. Again, my name is Lana Oriani, and I will be your host, as always, here on Truth and Transparency. I want to thank the moderators. I'm sure you guys are going to have your hands full. Um, great gals. They're all moms. Please be kind. Love it. $23. Do you guys have um any NFC go go Ben? Any whatever whatever Love it. $23. Do you guys have um any NFC go go Ben? Any whatever whatever Kaylee takes a picture of John Jack Showalter. Love it. $23. Do you guys have um any NFC go go Ben? Any whatever whatever Again, you would think she was taking a picture of her friend Maddie or possibly a selfie of herself, but she was not. Um, and her sister knew uh, what she was doing. She's also raising questions about why her sister called a young man named Jack multiple times the night she was slain. At 2.26 a.m., Kaylee starts to call Jack. Kaylee calls Jack six times between 2.26 a.m. to 2.44 a.m. Gosh, I give you a lot of credit. For example, use only. Again, her sister wanted to speak more on that, and that kind of got cut off. Uh, because the person that her sister is questioning is not the Jack that is actually her sister's boyfriend or ex soon to be again boyfriend. It would be the guy at the food truck uh, location. But everybody edits stuff when they make their videos for mainstream media. Welcome to Moscow, Idaho. For those of you guys that know how to say it right, it's Moscow. The big thing that I have an issue with is how do you clear people when you just begin investigating? on Kaylee and Maddie the night of um, from about 10, 15 until um, shortly before 3 a.m. Olivia Gonzalez says she discovered at least six calls from her sister Kaylee's phone between 226 and 252 made to a boyfriend in the early morning of November 13th. Detectives now saying these phone calls are a part of their investigation. Kaylee's family is firmly standing behind that boyfriend. I know for an absolute fact that he is not a suspect. He is not suspicious. He is 100% innocent in this. File. This new information adding more insight to the police timeline before Kaylee Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin were stabbed multiple times, likely while sleeping by a Rambo-style knife. Kaylee and Madison were last seen at this food truck, moments later leaving with a rideshare driver. Police now saying they do not believe that driver is involved. Police now also releasing this map that is part of the latest search area around the home and asking for new surveillance video. This TikTok showing Kaylee, Madison and Zana inside just weeks before. The two surviving roommates also in the video. We are blurring their faces because police have not identified... Kaylee's sister thinks people were cleared too soon, as does Truth and Transparency. Kaylee was the target. Her dad makes it pretty obvious. John, he goes by Jack, Showalter, a.k.a. the food truck dude. The guy with the hoodie. Not the guy that owns the food truck, but the guy with the hoodie. His alibi was him driving to his parents' house, possibly cabin, that night and is now allegedly in Africa with them. John, again, goes by the name Jack Showalter. 
his parents live about five hours from campus. Who drives that far by themselves on a Saturday night after A, making sure that a couple girls get home safely, B, has a bunch of drinks, and five hours? John Jack Showalter is one of five brothers, but questions surround if John, aka Jack, is the bi biological son of Larry and Kelly. My question to all of you guys is why was the Moscow Police Department so concerned with the quote unquote clearing of that hoodie guy? That's the one thing that they were so sure about. No roommates, no hoodie guy involved. Larry is an orthopedic surgeon. Kelly, well, she carries on the same trait. She's a doctor. Sam, college quarterback doctor. Samuel, Ben, they are twins, doctors. Hank was adopted. And then the question still remains, John Jack, was he adopted? These are pictures of John Jack Showalter growing up. Who is the real John Jack Showalter? This is not the boyfriend ever once of Kaylee or anybody in the home. In his LinkedIn profile, there it is. He was a member of one of the fraternities. This is one of his pictures. And again, this is a close-up on the fact that Kaylee Gonzalez was severely more injured, and her injuries did not match those of the others. Uh, so many bizarre things happen on November 12th. Um, and I am going to pause the video right here for the main purpose of this. So many um, crazy things did happen on November 12th when you're going to talk about social media. We have people making, you know, Venmo transactions and writing, you know, obscure things. But something that I think that has not been talked about and I think needs to be talked about is this. On November 12th, 2022 and November 13th, I want you guys to meet Dakota, Dakota Goldman. Um, who is she? Well, we're going to find out. But she claims to be from the same area as Kaylee, and she knows her. Uh, this is what she posted, guys, on November 12th, 2022. That would be like the Saturday before like the incoming early morning hours of then November 13th. This is what she posted, and it was from a um, – she actually shared the post as she follows – um, one of like the uh, astronomy um, social media pages. Again, that is what she posted on the 12th. Of November. Now, this is what she then posted on November 13th. I don't have the exact times of the post on November 12th, and I don't have the exact time of the post here on November 13th. Check it out. Then, on November 14th, so news started to make waves the late evening of November 13th, heavily on November 14th. The same girl, Dakota, posts this. Kaylee and Calvez, I love you, baby. Always have, always will. And then she shared the University of Idaho's post from November 14th. Now, this may not seem like a big deal to a lot of people, and that's fine. But it should be a big deal to anybody that's been following this case. After Kaylee's mother referenced the boogeyman on her latest interview, I went back 
to check that post out by Dakota. What I did is I paid attention to the N.M. Sanchez reference. You gave me hope. That was the worst of it. N.M. Sanchez. Then I zoomed in on the boogeyman. I'm curious how long Kaylee and her boyfriend were separated for, and if during that time anything happened between Kaylee and Showalter, aka the food truck guy. Again, this is a home team productions, truth and transparency. Fight for a family. Thank you guys for being here for this live broadcast. John Jack, goes by the name Jack, thought that he had a chance with Kaylee for whatever reason, and he was making it a point to quote-unquote run into her at local establishments over the past month or two. I would now like to know when it became public knowledge that Kaylee took a job and was moving to Texas. Again, Jack Showalter he was not happy uh, at the fact that Kaylee was leaving. He only had so much time before Christmas break because that would eventually be the end. She'd be gone and be moved out. John Jack went into the home after being dismissed that evening for the last time. He went to the third floor and killed both girls. Ethan heard it, came out of the bedroom, only to be stabbed in the doorway of the bedroom of the second level. I do apologize for the Z instead of an X. Xana woke up and she fought with Jack until the very end. And the bruises that her dad speaks of, that's why. The only intended targets or target that evening were Kaylee and Madison. If the perp, if is a very strong word there, if the perp was in fact John Jack Showalter. Uh, my profile is the following. It was a personal attack on Kaylee. They have hunting skills. They do have a Rambo style knife. They are an outcast in society and so on and so forth. Again, this is a home team production. This will run through one more time. And then I have additional information to substantiate uh, claims made within this video. This video has been dedicated to Kaylee's family, especially her dad. Her dad reminds me of my dad and fight for a family that I am the president of a nonprofit, we stand with the Goncalves family. Again, I want to thank you guys for being here, and I want to hear from all of you guys. Love it. $23. Do you guys have um, any NFC, go, go, Ben? Any, whatever, whatever... Love it. $23. Do you guys have um any NFC go go Ben any whatever whatever Love it $23 Do you guys have um any NFC go go Ben any whatever whatever She's also raising questions about why her sister called a young man named Jack multiple times the night she was slain. At 2.26 a.m., Kaylee starts to call Jack. Kaylee calls Jack six times between 2.26 a.m. 
to 2.44 a.m. Gosh, I give you a lot of credit. For example, use only. pretty good timeline on Kaylee and Maddie the night of um, from about 10 15 until um, shortly before 3 a.m. Olivia Gonzalez says she discovered at least six calls from her sister Kaylee's phone between 226 and 252 made to a boyfriend in the early morning of November 13th. Detectives now saying these phone calls are a part of their investigation. Kaylee's family is firmly standing behind that boyfriend. I know for an absolute fact that he is not a suspect. He is not suspicious. He is 100% innocent in this. Fire. This new information adding more insight to the police timeline before Kaylee Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin were stabbed multiple times, likely while sleeping by a Rambo-style knife. Kaylee and Madison were last seen at this food truck, moments later leaving with a rideshare driver. Police now saying they do not believe that driver is involved. Police now also releasing this map that is part of the latest search area around the home and asking for new surveillance video. This TikTok showing Kaylee, Madison and Zana inside just weeks before. The two surviving roommates also in the video. We are blurring their faces because police have not identified... All right, guys, here we go. So those of you guys that just joined us a little bit late, Kaylee's sister, as well as her mom, as well as her dad, they know so much more because they got into Kaylee's socials, meaning her social media, also her phone. Now, it has not been said, do the police, does law, does law enforcement have their cell phones? Um, did the perp take the cell phones? Uh, my gut right now tells me that no, um, he did not take uh, these items. But more importantly, the family, the family of Kaylee um, has been speaking out heavily. And I'm telling you here today why. It is because they are afraid that this is going to get pushed under a rug. Universities, I went to the University of Cincinnati. I was a two-sport athlete, okay? If there is one thing that the university looks out for, it they look out for themselves. They have the best lawyers, and they will make sure that they can do anything and everything that is going to possibly PR spin to make it look like the university. And those that attend the university um, are not at fault. They're going to do everything to protect the university and the Goncalves family started realizing that and that is why Kaylee's father spoke the words as do I need to be the alpha don't make me be the alpha okay because he's ready to be it but guess what his daughter never wanted him to be an alpha you know hey dad just remember that don't be a Chad dad remember that you really got to pay attention to the way these people grew up, their families, what they represent, um, how they carried themselves, what they believed in as, uh, as people, uh, what their core values were. And this family just wants the truth. And he's saying, my daughter was basically the target. Okay. Like just stop, stop playing around here. Um, he didn't have to go up the stairs, meaning when he entered the house on the slider, he went up the stairs. If it was to steal something on that main level or if it was to, you know, he could have went downstairs. He could have stayed on that level. He chose to go upstairs. Okay, that's because the targets or target was upstairs. Um, hit Mr. Goncalves, he is making sure that this 
that it doesn't get swept out of the rug. And they've made it very clear and they've said it in a way to not single out anybody. So they say that they believe that people were cleared, you know, too soon uh, versus saying a person. So they say people. Um, They're trying to be very cautious of their words. Um, This is an educated family. We're not dealing with riffraff, okay? So the main thing is, is when you hear him say about going to the third floor, going upstairs, um, that does not mean that he came in through a window on the third floor, okay? This is about the fact that there was a target and that person went exactly where, you know, they thought she would be, period. Otherwise, go downstairs. Go stay on that, that, that second level. But that's not what happened. And he wants everyone to stop playing games. He wants the truth. And he knows that he is up against not only law enforcement, but against the university. Um, but they're going to keep everything as hush-hush as they can because that's what universities do. They involve their lawyers, um, as anybody would involve lawyers, but now that's creating, in the eyes of the Goncalves, issues that now the police don't want to talk to them because of the university's lawyers involved. So when people want to watch my video and say, now you're saying the university's involved? No, I'm saying that when lawyers get involved, that's putting an extra layer between Mr. Goncalves and the police department. Um, and I'm saying that this university, just like any university, they make a ton of money for the city that they are in, for the town that they are in. This university pumps so many jobs, so much money to this area. This university is everything to Moscow, Idaho. And if you don't know that and you don't believe that, then I'm sorry for your lack of knowledge in that area. But that's, that's economy 101. Now, Kaylee's sister, again, like we do, they think that people were cleared too soon. And she is right to feel that way. How can you possibly go on the record and take a presser days after the presser was due? That presser should have happened days before when it does. And the chief comes out and he says it. I should have been standing out here days ago. And I'll own that. Okay. So the first couple of things that you want to make clear is that the roommates had nothing to do with this as well as you know people at the um food truck stop well why was that the main concern none of that even needed to be said but that was very very important for the university um to get that out and you want to know how i know that because they let the police department the police chief they let the president of University of Idaho speak at a freaking police conference like the presser why is the university president there explain that to me and you can't you can't explain that that's unexplainable now the guy that was at the food truck who was in the hoodie in the background that is not Jack Decor, the tennis star, okay? The, the boyfriend of Kaylee. That is not who is in that hoodie. That's not who that is. The guy in the hoodie that's in the background, he actually had his cap on backwards and his hood was down. But he knows that area. He knows that that truck is on a quote-unquote Twitch feed, live stream. That the moment that he gets there, he backs away, he takes his hood, he reverses his hat, puts his hat on forward so his bill is down, and then he pops his hood. And then he stands as far back as he can. Why? Why would that be the first thing that you would do when you would arrive at the food truck? Wouldn't the first thing that you would do if you were concerned about two girls, hey, are you guys okay? 
I gotta go, I gotta take off. I'm going to my mom and dad's cabin. I'm going to their place, you know, for the holidays or whatnot. Cause it's, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take off. You guys are good, right? You guys got your, you guys got your lift and everything. You're good, right? Okay. Then I'll see you guys later. It was so good to run into you. That's the normal transaction between two human beings that are, you know, on pace with each other. Hey, yeah. Thank you so much for walking us down here. Thank you for walking us down here so we don't have to walk alone, so that we weren't by ourselves as females, okay? But that's not what happened. That would be a normal transaction between human beings. But that's not what happened. What happened was is they crossed each other up on paths. Oh, I do want to give a special shout out. Mod Squad, thank you, love. She just gifted 10 memberships. Hopefully you guys grabbed one up. Um, what that means is that you have, um, 30 days from today, you will, you will get free membership to this channel. That means you will have access to all of the member only videos, even from the past videos. So go check them out. Um, you'll also have access to chat when it's only members only. There's a lot of perks there. Thank you so much mod squad. That was awesome. Just want to say thank you. Uh, the people that mod for my channel, they are moms. Um, they are raising uh, young, you know, girls and boys, just like the people that we're talking about here today. And, um, they don't get paid. They do this out of the kindness of their heart because they believe in, uh, this channel and what it stands for. And that's what, f that is a fight for a family. And it's a nonprofit that we're just starting up and, you know, getting things going, but that is so kind. Thank you so much, Mod Squad. Love you. That's awesome. And anybody that caught one of those, congratulations, you got a free membership. Um, love to, to give praise when, uh, when praise is, you know, due and needed. So thank you. So those of you guys that are confused about who the hoodie guy is, the hoodie guy is not, um, Jack Decor. That is her longstanding boyfriend. That is not who the hoodie guy is. Okay. The hoodie guy, his name is actually John Jack, but they, he grew up being called Jack. So it's John Jack Showalter. Now the Showalter family name is very, 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 uh, prominent name in, um, medicine. It basically spits out doctors. Um, Larry and Ka uh, and Kelly have done amazing work in Kenya and that needs to be praised. And that had their work and, and, and who they are as human beings has nothing to do with what happened on November, you know, 12th going to the 13th. Um, so please do not get that twisted. What John Jack Showalter's parents have accomplished and continue to accomplish to this day and probably for, you know, hopefully a long time to come is uh, they go over to Africa and they've done a bunch of missionary work and that needs to be um, praised uh, just as much as anything else that anybody wants to praise in this world. But just as much as that needs to be praised, that is separate from what happened on November 13th. And this video is highlighting things that the family is, is trying to do in the most political possible way possible. Um, they want to believe in the law enforcement and in those that are working on the case. They want to believe in their work. They want to know that they're doing all the things. But I think they also know that they're up against possibly financial uh, burdens when it comes to, you know, how does somebody get cleared that was clearly watching these two females that in within two hours were brutally murdered in their bed? How does somebody get cleared when you're just investigating a case, the first thing that you, you know, they wanted to make it known that nobody that was on the 911 call was responsible. Nobody at that food truck was responsible. And then they started making sure that all that was blurred out. Like, why do you think that that happened? Well, because parents are making phone calls. Prominent people are making phone calls. And if you don't think that that's the reason, then then, hey, more power to you. Um, 
it's like anything in life. When you're not told something, you're going to continue to do it. But if you're getting phone calls, if the police department's getting phone calls and saying, why is my kid on such and such? I'm going to sue you and stuff like that. I mean, it's going <laughs> to, do you know what's going on here? Like my kid was, you know, he's at our cabin, you know, but the family was never given these alibis. The family wants answers because why are you clearing somebody when you're just starting an investigation? You're not even to the phase of clearing people. And why are you publicly clearing anybody? What are you doing? What are you doing? That is the worst that you could ever do. Even if they are cleared, you don't have to publicly clear anybody. Why are you? Um, and then people are going to come out and say, oh, they're doing it as a tactic. This family every single day is having like a heart attack. Why do you think they're talking to the media? Do you think that they would be talking to the media if they didn't feel that they needed to? Nobody just goes out and wants to like take on and be like, yeah, come over here, Fox. When do you, you go to those type of people when you need help? When you see the writing on the wall? And you're like, oh, shit. What was the media always designed for in this country? It was to make sure that the government couldn't do what? Couldn't bamboozle us. So the Goncalvises went to the media because they thought that, that they needed to. It wasn't that they wanted to. They needed to. They need to make stuff known now because they're afraid of what's about to happen and um have you noticed that they've never said the person's name they've never even said who's the food truck guy you know who's the food truck i mean they're not naming anybody you would think that these people are minors they're not minors these are adults they can go and fight for our country they can go and die for our country these are adults Yes, they're children in our eyes when you're parents. They are our babies. But to the world, they're adults. These aren't minors. They're adults. What? 18 and over, right? Uh, take a look at the rest of the video. Yeah, there is no sound. Um, I was just hoping that people would read it. Uh, sorry, there was no sound there. I wanted people to read it and kind of just think about what they're what they're seeing. Um, read it on your own accord and just think for a minute. Um, I like when people think and process some things. So I do apologize. I should have said that there was no sound. I do apologize. That was my fault. Um, but thank you for writing that in chat. I do appreciate that. Uh, please get ready to hear from Jack. Uh, S's co-worker. We're going to hear uh, her words. that's funny Lisa thank you for saying that hit the like button it doesn't hit back even hit the dislike button you know whatever it is your cup of tea you be your own individual here um, 
I definitely want you guys to be your own own people and persons when you're here. Uh, Donna Murphy, I want to say thank you for joining as a member. That's very kind. Um, thank you. Again, here we go, guys. This is something I am going to focus on right here, and this is the part of the video that I think needs to be focused on because I think that the Goncalvises could probably answer some of these questions. You know, did Kaylee know um, Dakota Goldman? Um, or is this somebody that is, I mean, I, I think that you need to pay attention to the wording. Uh, so here we go. So, so many bizarre things happen on November 12th and, and November 13th in uh, Moscow, Idaho to the point of Venmos being uh, passed back and forth, to the point of one of them saying 3.30 a.m. Uh, that was in one of my past videos. Go check it out. Uh, but I want you guys here, you're going to meet Dakota Goldman, who claims in these posts here, uh, November 12th, 13th, and 14th, that she is from the same area um, as Kaylee. I went ahead and I looked into her, and she is. Um, she is a mom, and that she knows her. Uh, this is what she posted on November 12th. Let's go ahead and start there. It's Astro Vibes. And when you scroll down, it's the Boogeyman. Then this is what she posted on November 13th. A begging you to love me was the cruelest thing I ever did to myself. And then on the 14th, Kaylee Goncalves, I love you, baby. Always have, always will. So, I mean, again, once Kaylee's mother referred to the boogeyman, and when you really think about it, the boogeyman is they're in your room and they're going to get you. Like, when she said that the other night on her um, interview, I thought about that. And everybody knows if you're a mom and your kid has ever talked to you about that and you have to check underneath the bed and you got to check, you know, in the closet and, um, you know, it's scary, you know, it's scary for, you know, little kids growing up. I have a little, I have a little boy and, um, the dark is scary alone. And then you have like these little hidden spots in your room or in their bedroom. And, you know, when she said that, I was just like, it made me think of this and I had to go back and check that out. And, um, and it's just like, wow, it's, it's, it's horrifying as a parent, you know, you think that, Oh God, my kid's safe. Like, Hey, I just want you to be safe tonight. When you go out, you know, get an Uber driver. Okay. They make it home safely. You think that your worries are over as a parent. You know, your kid's at home. They're in their bed. Like, there shouldn't be a worry. They were smart. You raised them to be, you know, to pay attention. Don't drink and drive. And they're doing all the right things. And I can't help but think of those are all the things that the Goncalves' family has said since day one. That, you know, Maddie and, and, and Kaylee did everything right. They went around safe. They came home. They got in their bed, you know. Um, and this is just horrifying because how do you protect your kid from something like this? And the, I think the only possible way to do that is, um, you know, these alarm systems and, and things like that. But you, you just, you think that once your kid gets home and they're at home that they're safe and it's so disheartening when your kid did everything right and you raise them to do all those things and then this happens. So, um, but yeah, after Kaylee's mother referenced the boogeyman on her latest interview, I went back to check out the posts by Dakota. And I want to know if Dakota really knew, you know, Kaylee. Exactly who is Dakota? Well, Dakota seems like she knows the family. And I think that if she doesn't, I think that this all needs to look into. Also, I'm curious to know, you know, how long Kaylee and her boyfriend were separated. Uh, because did anything happen? Like, was there a drunken night where maybe her and John Jack hooked up? Because if you actually look at John Jack, he has that reddish hair. Um, and it's, he looks like, you know, her, her boyfriend or her ex or soon to be back together. You know, they've been together forever. 
you know, once somebody has a type, they have a type. And maybe there was a night that, that, that something happened it, and it was what it was. But um, to John Jack, it was way more than that. You know what I'm saying? So I would love to know how long Kaylee and her, you know, Jack Decor, long time standing high school sweetheart, how long were they not together? And, um, and who knew that Kaylee was you know, moving out, moving to Texas. Um, did, did somebody see their window closing and was somebody upset about that? All right, so here we go. We're going to hear, these are the words of Kaylee, or I'm sorry, um, this is John Jack Showalter's um, co-worker. I want to show you guys a picture really quick so you guys can see this. Okay, can you guys hear? Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I'm going to start from the beginning. I thought that you guys could hear. It was on mute. I do apologize. Could you hear any of it? I can. Okay, so we're going to start from the beginning. I do apologize. Oh, I just read for like, you know, 10 minutes over here, I felt like. There you go, Anna. Woo-woo. <laughs> Uh, okay. 
this whole time I was reading, you guys, <laughs> and uh, it was on mute. So I do apologize. <laughs> so here we go. Let's start again. I do apologize. I was like, why am I seeing people say no sound? <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, again, things are blurred out for the safety of this person. Um, so here we go. Again, hello, I am uh, sorry to hear about the students who were murdered recently. Also, thank you, all of you, for your hard work and all you've put in. I am only, or I'm sorry, I'm originally from Boise, but currently living out of state. So I hope I am still allowed to give any possible helpful information pertaining to the case. I couldn't help but notice that a young man named Jack Showalter may have been a person of interest. I only bring this up because I used to work with him at Flatbread in, at Flatbread is like a restaurant, okay guys, Flatbread, in uh, Bound Crossing in Boise, Idaho. Uh, summer of 2021, to be exact. I'm not sure how much information you all were able to gather from him, but I couldn't help shake the feeling that he may be involved. I hope it's not my own personal bias as I didn't work with him for long, but there are just some specific behaviors that gave me an eerie vibe, an eerie vibe. According to my boss, Jack was a seasonal employee and would be going back to college in the fall. At first, we seemed to be able to work together fairly well, but after a few shifts, his demeanor changed completely. Another female coworker and I were in the middle of a dinner rush, and apparently a mistake was made somewhere, and he started blaming me for things that I didn't do, saying things like, you are the dumbest bitch I've ever met and pacing around, standing super close and getting in my way when I tried to put some space between us. In an attempt to ease the tension, I decided to play along by saying, hey, thank you so much, hoping maybe he'd just like shift course or at least ease up a little. But instead, he became even more aggressive and started towering over me and shouting. Unfortunately, I wasn't prepared for that kind of interaction that evening. So I slapped him. Not my proudest moment, but it seemed like the safest alternative for me at the time being shorter than he. I got written up for it, so it is on record. You can check. But apparently, it was not the first time he had treated other women in the kitchen in a similar fashion. To what extent, I'm not sure but they all said he had made them uncomfortable. It concerns me because I saw the food truck footage and if that really is the same Jack Showalter, I would definitely keep my eye on him and ask around a little more. Something just doesn't feel right with me. I'm sorry, sit right with me. I hope this helps and I thank you for taking the time to go through all of this. Thank you. Um, again, for the safety of everybody, that is being all blurred out. I gave you guys enough to see that what I'm reading has been sent and all the things, uh, all the good things, you know. Um, again, she even went above and beyond to send me the screenshot, and I'll show it, of the distance between his home and the pizzeria that they worked at. It is uh, 14 minutes. It's 5.7 miles from, you know. And then went to the extreme to send me um, a couple other things to do with his LinkedIn that I already had. But it was nice to see that, you know, she was trying to be diligent in her, um, she was trying to be fair and her assessment with like, hey, I'm not just making this up. Here's this, 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 this. And I appreciated that. Um, now, I think if you listen to all of the footage, 
from the Goncalves family. Um, I said I was going to keep this live right around an hour. So I'm going to give you guys like the last 10 minutes to ask questions and I can answer what I can. But the Goncalves family went to the media for a reason. And they believed that people were being cleared. Um, but they didn't know why. They wanted to know, like, wait, why, why are you clearing these people? Like, you just started, like, this case and investigating this case like gathering the information how and why are you clearing people and if you are can you give us the alibis i mean what are these people's alibis um so here we go and nobody and law enforcement should know this nobody gets cleared Nobody gets publicly cleared, um, usually, unless you're the family of horrific events like this. So why did Moscow, Moscow Police Department feel the pressure? Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the word pressure. To they, they waited how long to even have a press conference? Then when they do, they tell, they felt some type of pressure to speak on go watch go back and watch the first presser and go watch the second presser and see what their main focus was on and their main focus to me as an observer was on you know making sure that hey nope nope roommates nothing to do with this anybody that had anything to do with that now one call nothing to do with this the food truck, anything to do? Nope, nope. That is a that was a bystander who was helping the girls make sure that they made it home safely that night. Okay. So, <clears throat> and anybody asking why anybody would send me something, I'm not just a YouTuber, by the way. I'm not just Truth and Transparency YouTube. I have a nonprofit organization. It's called Fight for a Family. It's a 501c3. You can look it up. Um, go to www.fightforafamily.com. One of my moderators can throw that in chat um that's the uh the website you can look it up i am a registered 501c3 nonprofit organization it's called fight for a family and i am the president of that organization and my goal with this video was to let the goncalves family know that there is a bunch of people out there that believe um in them that are listening to them and that see what they're seeing uh, have been a paying attention since day one and the nonprofit fight for a family fights for you know usually underprivileged um, inmates that feel that they were wrongfully convicted and things like that so the the point of all of this is is that no one's blaming or, or casting guilt upon anybody what needs to be re-emphasized and brought back to light is that food truck footage was a gift from i mean i i'm a spiritual person from god in, in a sense that we were even able to have that okay because if we didn't have that footage possibly you know everything that was obtained from that footage obviously it wouldn't be there if if that food truck wasn't doing some twitch live but the family wants to know how are you writing off people when you just started to investigate to the point that you don't have dna back how are you ruling people out when you do not even have the dna results back if there is possibly dna results so the family refuses in my opinion to be shut out based upon money you know what the show walters have money so they were able to make some phone calls and say you know the family is wanting their questions answered and not with bullshit not with bullshit so i think that if anybody's taking anything from this video it needs to be this if it was you and that was your kid, wouldn't you want to say, well, how are you clearing the guy that was like seriously staring down my child two hours before they were brutally, I mean, we're talking about stabbed to death. 
we're talking about somebody taking like that is they didn't take a gun and just shoot them and walk away they stood over and broke into their home and brutally savagely murdered my baby girl how would you feel oh that's okay oh he was driving he was driving to his parents cabin at three o'clock in the morning what yeah we have him you know okay well what, what do you have him on what do you have him oh he's seen on um cctv getting gas like two hours away so how would he get there in that amount of time and we're sure it's him because i mean you guys keep blurring out the video that we you know he's wearing the same outfit was he wearing the same outfit that he was wearing in that video the family wants to know because you're going on you're going on public record clearing people and the family's over here like we're not even getting any answers but you're out there clearing people what's going on here and i think that from a parent standpoint if you can't get behind that and and they just they're educated the gun conferences are educated and they know that hey if we don't get at it right now and because the things that we know mr goncalva said it my daughter my daughter did not have the same damage and he was he was trying to be so um so careful with his wording and you could tell that but then he also was like so frustrated at times like no i paid for that funeral that's my baby girl that's my daughter i paid for her funeral I sent her to college and she came back in a box. And when somebody says those words, that was a shot to the university. I sent her to college to get an education. And she got sent back to me in a box. Mm. I want to say thank you to Lori. A new member there. I want to highlight that somewhere. I saw, I swear I saw it. There she is. Hi, Lori. Welcome. Um, Mark, thank you for this, for saying that this is the best channel on this case. Thank you for saying that. I do appreciate that. Um, you guys, we, we've all, if you aren't a parent yet, one day, hopefully you get to, to feel that joy, but there are so many parents that are watching this case. And there are so many college students that are watching this case. And I feel like so many college students and so many parents right now are bonding actually over this case because it, it, it hits you in that type of a way. Like, you know, when you had to care about your kid and they're at home and they're a, getting to be a teen and you got to make sure they get home by, by their curfew and that they're, you know, but then you send them off to college. Okay, here you go. Like, oh my gosh, you're like on your own and you have your own place and like there's nobody to like you know, tell you, hey, you can't eat ice cream for breakfast, you know. Um, but then you think that, okay, we did a great job. Like, they're they're doing all of the right things, you know. Because um, in high school, you're like, listen, if you ever at a party and you've been drinking or your friends have been drinking, no questions asked, you call me, I will be there. I will be there. Um, and that's, and those are like, those are the messages and, and the lessons that you teach your kids. And then to see that they carry on that way in college and they, hey, they call their Uber and they're safe. And then they walk to the place that they were at before to go get the food. So you see them doing everything right. And then only to find out that they're at home and that they couldn't be more safe in your eyes. You know, um... So it's just, uh, the parents should wonder and the parents should ask every question they're asking. And I think that the community and this community, especially on YouTube needs to get behind, um, you know, whether it's just family, whether it's all the families that want to come out and say this, but Nobody, in my opinion, should be cleared at this point unless they are cleared due to digital and DNA. So if you gave up your DNA and you gave up your digitals and you were cleared that way, then the authorities should say that. 
Um, but otherwise, I think that the police department is dropping the ball. I think that the family has every right to worry. And I think the worry is coming because of the involvement of the university with lawyers and, and the potential last names of people that are possibly involved. Um, I know that you can say that clear doesn't mean anything, but clearly this family thinks that it means something. So why wouldn't you grab the family, sit them down, and tell them, I am sorry that we should have made this a little bit more clear on, on a couple of things. This is our strategy with things, okay? But you've left them in the dark. That's why they're out here. That is why they're out here. Okay, they're out in, in the media because everything smells like flat out shit. And if you want to believe anything other than that, then I think that you're a fool. Because if this family believed that it didn't smell like shit and they were getting somewhere, and what if this family is providing them with a bunch of information and they're just doing nothing with it? There's a reason that this family that this family feels this way. Okay, they're not out here, you know, barking this stuff up. Do you think that a dad wants to talk about how his daughter was brutally murdered? Absolutely not. How his daughter could have possibly been beheaded? Do you think that anybody wants to talk about that? The the damage was different. What dad? wants to talk about that. No dad. Nobody. Nobody wants to talk about that. Um, again, I like to keep these lives now um, to a certain point, but I'm going to go ahead and look at chat now. So if you guys have questions, if I can answer them, I will definitely try to. Um, I more or less just dig in and bring the facts to you guys. Um, I'm a huge advocate uh, for our Constitution. I do believe that everybody is innocent until proven guilty. Um, so everybody in this case is innocent until proven guilty. But this family, we also have rights, you know, as uh, U.S. citizens, and they have the right to... Uh, freedom of speech. They have the right to uh, speak out. And I think that platforms need to give them, you know, that space to do that because mainstream media has a tendency to want to, you know, I would only, if I was a family, do live interviews that way that they can't cut, like cut anything that I say. What I say is what I say. I'm not going to have you edit anything. I'm not going to have you cut anything up. So things like that. Um, but again, oh, mystical, miss, shake it fast. Watch yourself. I told you what I think about. Um, McGuire there. Thank you for this new sub. You are amazing. No one should be cleared. And I think it was uh, Jack S. Outcast rejected anger uh, management entitled. Absolutely. Um, I want to say thank you for your super chat as well. Uh, thank you guys for all being here. Um, Jazzy J, just subscribed. Great and great and informative. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, Ellen. Ellen B has been here forever. Uh, love you, Ellen B. Wow, Lana, your audience is growing. Yeah, it's nice when you can actually focus on things that you know people want to hear about versus the other crazy crap. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. Oh, and Maple Beeves here. Oh, Maple Beeves, you know, one of the best, um, I'm telling you, one of the best students I know. Maple Beeves, love you. Uh, she is going places, folks. Uh, if, if Fight for a Family could get so lucky to snatch her up as, um, as a, a leader of the organization, we would be so, so lucky. So I'm so glad you're here, Maple Beeves. Um, you keep doing what you're doing. Uh, Betty, thank you so much for that super chat. Glad that you're here. <clears throat> uh, 
do you think they will ask for his DNA even though he is in Africa? I, I, I think that we're in 2022, about to be in 2023. I think that digital evidence could, uh, could definitely, you know, help. I don't think that you need to ask for his quote unquote DNA. Um, I think there's other ways to go about it. I think that if his alibi though is that he's driving, that's weak unless you got CCTV to prove your whereabouts as you were driving. Like, is he being passed off on cell towers and, and where were those cell towers? Then it's going to go to, you know, um, let's say that he started driving at 4 a.m. Well, could he still have murdered them? Absolutely. You know, so it's things like that. But I, th I think the, mo the most important thing is that law enforcement is being, you know, I mean, you want to talk about doing things by the book they're just not and i just don't understand why they wouldn't in this situation you should be like more cautious than anything uh why did jack so their family <clears throat> jack's family is very uh prominent with the medical field they're a bunch of doctors and they do a, a bunch of missionary work over in kenya uh one of his brothers was adopted from kenya and right now we're still figuring out if jack was adopted as well his older siblings, uh, very much so, uh, they were sports players. Uh, they were, you know, they succeeded in athletics and academics. And uh, the parents showed a lot of, you know, support behind those things. And there was a lot of social media, you know, talks about that. And then you got to the kids of, of, of Hank and Jack, and that's where it fell off. Um, I think the most that the mom posted about as far as Jack was concerned was when he sliced and diced his first elk in 2015 with his neighbor friend, Garrett. Uh, Garrett was his neighbor. Rachel was his mom. And they were out and they went um, hunting and he got his first elk in 2015. And, um, yeah. So... I agree there, uh, Robin. Robin said that the lack of transparency with the public is just unacceptable, especially with the family. You know what? If you want to tell us one thing, but at least the family, I think that for the family, um, the lack of of trust with the family. I mean, you tell things to the family with the trust of like, listen, hey, we're telling you this, but we want to keep this close to us for the integrity of the case. So then you give that to the family, right? And then see what the family does with it. If they, if they burn your trust, you know, then, you know, that's why maybe you stop giving them information for the entirety of the case. But I don't think anybody's out there that would be in the situation of any of these families out to ruin their chances of catching um, the person responsible or persons. Um, yeah, and that's also a great point here. If the case is not resolved, uh, U of I will lose big time. Well, I think that's uh, one of the points that Mr. Goncalves has made the other night when he said, I get it that no university wants, no university wants a bunch of reward posters up and around reminding them that, hey, for students that were loved and admired, were just brutally, savagely murdered with a knife. I mean, who wants that up around the university? nobody that's not going to make he said who's going to want to rush with those posters around uh, but he brought up rush for a reason versus like enroll you know i think that we need to pay attention to the language that he uses who wants to rush with that around well who wants to enroll fuck rush who wants to enroll with that around but that was like a more of like a dig into like the fraternity sorority lifestyle there um so but, yep, <clears throat> I'm going to wrap this up, guys. I have a couple other videos coming out with more information um, that I think, you know, it's easier to watch maybe some videos and, and get what you need out of it. Um, yes, Moscow uh, Moscow did release a four-page presser. Um, I'm sure a bunch of it is repetitive. I haven't even looked at it yet, to be honest. Um, hey, Floydy. How are you, Floydy? <laughs> Good to see you. Oh, thank you there, Maple Beeve. I call her Maple Beeve. I love my Canada support over there. Um, 
it is repetitive see there you go oh i already i already have a video on kyle honey if you guys want to see my kyle video go check it out i dropped that like a week ago my kyle um fry video free fry depending on how you say it um So, oh, thank you, bad girl. How are you liking that new membership there? Oh, thank you, Boston. How are you feeling over there, Boston? Boston's a hell of a mom, guys, hell of a mom. So, thank you there, Nikki. Um, thank you. Uh, absolutely, does, uh, Paula says, law enforcement needs to keep stuff private, too, so when they make the arrest, it is solid, and the killer doesn't get off on some technicality. Um, absolutely. I, I think though there's a lack of, um, it's not, it's not even about you guys. It's, it's about relationships. It's about relationships. I don't have to tell you everything. I kind of be like, listen, I can't tell you everything, but Hey, I'm going to call in and check on you and see how you're doing and say like, Hey, you know, we're getting more tips in today. We're going through some stuff. I wish, you know, I, I, I want to be able to tell you about this stuff, but I got to keep the integrity, you know, with the case, but I am making the phone call. You know, who's the public relations? Come on. You can't make this family feel that they are important enough that you're dealing with them before anybody else. You know, if you're going to if you're going to let the president of the University of Idaho come march into your presser, then you have to have some wherewithal to, to know that you better keep these four families. I feel like I'm talking about the mafia here, these five families, you know, Where's your compassion, your empathy, but more importantly, where's your public relations? You need to have relationships with these families. You need to actually be um, interviewing these families. Hey, let's go through the phone. Hey, do you know this person? I'm gonna go through Kaylee's phone. We have it here. Can you identify any of these subjects? You know, things like that. I don't know what they're doing, but all I can tell you is, is I think that they're lost, and I think that the FBI, um, you know, they make it over. Oh, hey, we have all these available resources. All these available resources could be there, but if you don't know how to use them and utilize them and you don't know what you're looking for, who cares? Who cares? Um, I just, I put myself in the, in the shoes of, of the family here and maybe it hits home with me more because, you know, I went to college I was not in a sorority, um, but I was a two-sport athlete. And being an athlete is, in a sense, like, you know, its own type of um, secret society. But uh, I could tell you what we did do. We had each other's backs. Nobody would, be, nobody would get away with even talking shitty to us before we would know who did it, why they did it, and when they did it. So this whole thing, but I feel like with fraternities and sororities, it's the opposite way. It's like, we know something, but we're not going to tell you. We know, but we're not going to tell you. That's not how athletes are. We know something, but we're going to go fucking pound you. That's the best way I can say it. Like, we know what we're going to tell you about it, and we're going to take care of it. But sororities and fraternities, it's just like secret society, secret society. We know it, but we're not going to tell anybody. It, it, it's just different. It's, it's definitely different. So, um... Again, thank you guys very much. Consider thumbs upping the video or thumbs downing um, the video. Um, again, those of you guys that joined late, um, I will play uh, the video uh, one last time here on its end, and then um, the live will close out. So again, <coughs> thank you so much. And um, yep, you guys are great. That you're being kind in chat, all those good things. Thank you. Mm. Miss Marple, change your name there, seeing that you add the M I S S, or are you a new Miss Marple? Either way, love it, love it, love it. Um, thank you, Jen. Appreciate that. Um, I'll be dropping a new video today. Um, I'm going to combine all the jacks, and I'm going to make sure everybody knows who each of the jacks are. I'm going to treat it like a deck of cards. So I have a nice little live, or it's not a live, but it's a video. So it's, 
you know, you guys can know who all the jacks are. Hopefully that helps people. Um, thank you, Carrie. I appreciate that. All right, guys, here, check it out. Again, make sure you guys are kind to one another. Um, the world needs kindness right now. It's the holidays. And I couldn't imagine, you know, these families right now should be looking forward to, you know, Christmas and the new year. And I couldn't imagine going through what they're going through. So be safe out there and be kind to one another, okay? Thank you. Love it. $23. Do you guys have um, any NFC go go Ben? Any, whatever, whatever. Love it. $23. Do you guys have um any NFC go go Ben? Any whatever whatever Love it, twenty three dollars. Do you guys have um any NFC go go Ben? Any whatever whatever She's also raising questions about why her sister called the young man named Jack multiple times the night she was slain. At 2.26 a.m., Kaylee starts to call Jack. Kaylee calls Jack six times between 2.26 a.m. to 2.44 a.m. Gosh, I give you a lot of credit. For example, use only. good timeline on Kaylee and Maddie the night of um, from about 10 15 until um, shortly before 3 a.m. Olivia Gonzalez says she discovered at least six calls from her sister Kaylee's phone between 226 and 252 made to a boyfriend in the early morning of November 13th. Detectives now saying these phone calls are a part of their investigation. Kaylee's family is firmly standing behind that boyfriend. I know for an absolute fact that he is not a suspect. He is not suspicious. He is 100% innocent in this. This new information adding more insight to the police timeline before Kaylee Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin were stabbed multiple times, likely while sleeping by a Rambo-style knife. Kaylee and Madison were last seen at this food truck, moments later leaving with a rideshare driver. Police now saying they do not believe that driver is involved. Police now also releasing this map that is part of the latest search area around the home and asking for new surveillance video. This TikTok showing Kaylee, Madison and Zana inside just weeks before. The two surviving roommates also in the video. We are blurring their faces because police have not identified... John Jack Showalter's parents, <clears throat> they live about five hours from Moscow. Who drives that far for themselves on a Saturday night? 
after having some drinks at the local university pub. John Jack Showalter is one of five brothers, but questions surround if John Jack is actually a bi biological sibling. His brother Hank was adopted from Kenya. Why was the Moscow Police Department so concerned with clearing the name of Jack John? Or I'm sorry, John Jack Showalter with their first and second presser. Again, you have a family tree there. Prominent in the medical field. John Jack, he is a business major. How much of a financial contribution did the show Walters make to the University of Idaho? Who is the real John Jack Showalter? Again, organizations with the fraternities. And then just breaking recently that Kaylee Gonsalves, her wounds were significantly um, different and uh, in a more brutal fashion. So many bizarre things happened on November 12, 2022 and November 13, 2022. I want you guys to meet Dakota Goldman, who claims to be a friend. This was her post on November 12th. It was sharing a... astrology post and then on November 13th again sharing and then on November 14th Kaylee Gonzalez I love you baby always have always will after Kaylee's mother referenced the boogeyman on her latest interview I went back to check that post out by Dakota You gave me hope. That was the worst of it. N.M. Sanchez. And there's the boogeyman. I'm curious how long Kaylee and her boyfriend were separated. And if during that time, anything happened between Kaylee and Showalter, a.k.a. the food truck dude with the hoodie. Again, this is a home team productions. Executive producer is myself, Lana Oriani. Truth and Transparency, thanks you guys all for being here. John Jack thought that he had a chance with Kaylee for whatever reason, and I do believe it was during that period of time that she was not with her boyfriend, and he was making a point to run into her at multiple locations in public. I would like to know when it became public knowledge that Kaylee took a job and was moving to Texas because that would narrow a window down. John Jack was not happy at the fact that Kaylee was leaving. He only had so much time before Christmas break would be here and she would be gone, you know, gone for good. She was going to Texas. John Jack went to the home after being dismissed that evening for the last time. He went to the third floor and killed both girls. Ethan heard it, came out of the bedroom only to be stabbed in the doorway of that bedroom on the second level. Zana should be an ex there, by, by the way, guys. Woke up and she fought with Jack until the end. That's why her bruising that her father speaks about is so significant. Again, the only intended target or targets that evening were Kaylee and Madison, if the perpetrator is John Jack Showalter. Again, the word if is there for a reason. And then these are my profile of the perp. Uh, it was a personal attack on Kaylee. They have hunting skills, a Rambo-style knife, an outcast in society, has little self-worth and self-esteem. And your bonus is, is that this person, whoever it was, kept on bumping into Kaylee in public. Again, this is a home team productions. 
and this is dedicated to Kaylee's dad. Everyone is innocent until proven guilty, but we are allowed to have persons of interest, and John Jack Showalter is a person of interest, period. Fight for a family stands with the Goncalves family, period. Until next time, guys, truth and transparency will be here. Like, subscribe, consider being a member. Thank you so much. You can check out my other work on Rachel Del Tondo case, where I work with the families. Sheldon Jeter Jr., where I work with the families. Davon Cox, I work with the families. Jamie Brown, those are all cases out of Pennsylvania. And then the Lindsay Pardon case out of Ohio. So Fight for a Family, nonprofit 501c3, www.fightforafamily.com. Thank you, mods. And everybody be kind. Today is not a day to celebrate, but the arrest of Richard M. Allen of Delphi on two counts of murder is sure a major step in leading to the conclusion of this long-term and complex investigation. Of this long-term and complex investigation. Of this long-term and complex investigation this long-term and complex investigation.